now comes the, <laughs> the main attraction. The main attraction! <laughs> if you Heaven will. or Hell. My favorite song on the CD. Mine too. Mine, I love them all. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Lyrically, I feel like that's our biggest accomplishment as well. I, just, um, I love that song. <laughs> yeah, I really love that song. The lyrics are, are not about what you would think they're about. Um, yeah. They're actually about the music industry. We went through a really hard time in 2009. Um, a lot of people who like were supposed to be like big parts of our lives walked away from us, like managers and agents and stuff, and we're kind of like, you know, left us to fend for ourselves. And when we wrote that song, we were really super bitter, and we were like, fuck this, like, fuck these people, excuse my language, like, like if they don't want to work with us, they don't want to work with us. And like the chorus is like, <clears throat> the like, I've seen heaven or hell, made too much for myself, like, uh, held the world on my shoulders for a story to tell. Like, it's all about, like, you know, we were at, like, the top of our game. We were, like, <laughs> on, like, bigger tours. We had, like, a really good manager and a really good agent. And then all of a sudden, everything just collapsed, like, from under us. And, like, it wasn't our fault. Like, we didn't do anything wrong. We just followed and did what other people told us to do. And, like, it's kind of about, like, calling people out. Like, the whole, like, do you feel the same? I've given it time, but you went away and left me to die. Like, it's like saying, like, are we good enough? Like, what's the deal? Like, are you sitting around feeding us bullshit? Like, what's going to happen? What's... What are you gonna do? And then of course Aaron Marsh's part, like he's um, the angel of the song. Yeah, he's, he's like, it's gonna be okay. Exactly. Like I remember when I asked him to do the guest vocal or whatever, I was really like nervous. I was thought he was gonna think I was like some annoying little yeah, kid. Yeah, that happen? Originally he was gonna produce the CD. We were talking about having him produce it, and he came out to see us in Orlando, and we hung out and we talked. And he was like, listen guys, I really like your music and stuff. He was like, you guys write really good songs. He was like, but I produce indie stuff. And he was like, I don't think I could give you guys the sound you need. He was like, he was like, I would love to work on your record. He was like, but he was like, I don't think I'm like good for you guys. And we were like, yeah, we kind of understand that. I guess we kind of just wanted to work with him more because he was in Copeland and that's like our favorite band. So we were like, all right, you know, that's cool. We have other offers from other producers. And Jim was, Jim was the perfect fit. We didn't have Jim at this time or else we wouldn't even have talked. Aaron because Jim was like the perfect fit for the record and uh, when we found out Jim was doing it or whatever we were driving out to California and Chris and Rob were like you should ask Aaron to do a guest vocal and I was like I'm not gonna ask you to do a guest vocal I was like I've only talked to him like three times in my whole life they were like just ask him what's the worst thing that could happen he says no and I'm like all right whatever so I text him or whatever and he's like send me the song that you want me to do it to and I'll tell you if like it fits he was like, I'm not gonna just do a guest vocal to do it. He was like, I'm gonna do it if it makes sense for the song and if I can get down on it. I'm like, okay, so I sent him Heaven or Hell and it didn't even have his part in it. And I originally wanted him to sing Jessica's part, which was the part after his part where she like kind of, she sings the lyrics from the chorus but changes the melody a little bit. I wanted him to sing that part. And I sent it to him and he was like, hey, uh, he called me like 20 minutes after I sent it. And he was all excited. He was like, I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, um, so I got the song, I really like it, it's a great song, you should be really proud of it. And I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, uh, but I, I think I can write a better part than the part you wanted me to sing. He was like, I hear something really cool, do you mind if I do it? And I was like, uh, yeah, I mind. You no, know, <laughs> please do it, like you're, you're the singer of Copa. So he was like, all right, cool, I'm going to do it. And then I remember we were driving over the Rocky Mountains. Oh, we left California. We left California, it was the last day of recording. Finished, left sad, but like excited at the same time because we were finally done. And uh, we were through the Rocky Mountains where there's no service whatsoever. And I knew he was gonna text me because he said I'm gonna I'm gonna text you today when I send it to you. And I was like, damn it! Of course, like the one day that we're gonna be driving through the mountains. So like every time we would get service, I would get like a flood of text messages, and I would check real fast to see if he was sitting there. I'd be like, no. <laughs> and then like the sun was going down. It was like 5:30, 6 o'clock. And we like go over this one peak and I get all my text messages. And I see a text message from Aaron, like, just sent you the ID in your email. I was like, <gasps> and I was like, Rob, get your computer out, get your get your air card or whatever. And he puts his air card in, he gets it, he downloads it. It took forever. It took forever because we had no service. <laughs> and like I remember sitting Rob's Dial. laptop on like the uh, like the dashboard, plugging it into the speakers and, and everybody. We had the flip cans every, out. Yeah, we had the flute oh cans out because we were so excited. <laughs> like I'm there. Yeah, and we were like we were like all like freaking out. I was driving and and like we heard like the last chord. Like and then we heard like the swell. Then it goes into like the organ part where he sings, and we just heard that like heavenly voice. <laughs> and we were like, like squealed for like. We were like street. we were all completely silent while while it went down. Yeah. Then the song ended. We were like, oh my god! Like, out. <laughs> and we played it over and over and over like ten times. Yeah. And we were super super into it. <laughs>
I remember being like, I can't believe this is happening to me. Like, yeah. if I would have went back to my 16 year old self and been like, you're gonna be in a band that has Copeland Singer like do a guest vocal, <laughs> I would have punched myself in the face. <laughs> and, yeah, it was really good. But I think, you know, I've never asked him what the lyrics are about to that part, but he asked me what the song was about before he wrote the lyrics, and I told him. And what I've gotten from the song, like, is that like it's him kind of saying like, I've been where you are, like Copeland has been at that point, you know. You gotta just close your eyes and take a jump and, you know, go for it. And the way I fell in, which is actually the title of the CD, is the lyric that he wrote. It's kind of like, you know, you don't expect things to happen the way they do and you kind of like fall into a certain lifestyle and you don't really realize it. By the time you realize it, you're like so far involved into it and caught up in it that like, you're in, you know, you're in. You have to do it. You have to see how it goes and you have to just close your eyes and take the leap and yeah. that's what I always got from it and like I, even if that wasn't the meaning of it that's what I would want it to be so <laughs> I'm gonna just, just pretend that that's what he meant by it. Are you ever gonna ask him or? No I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just too nervous that like he would tell me something else and because really when nice. I listen to it still I get chills just thinking about like him even being involved in a band that I'm in you know like, and he's like the nicest human being of all time he's like the greatest person yeah, ever. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much yeah. it, track by track. Welcome to the lives of five of the lamest people you'll ever meet. <laughs>